Hi, my name is Ruby Smith, and I'm a student at Full Sail University, and this is my technology and music productions podcast for computer science. The first recording devices were scientific instruments used to capture and study sound waves. These devices were capable of recording voices and other sounds long before the phonograph. The most famous of these was Leon Scott's 1857 phonoautograph. Alexander Graham Bell experimented with the phonoautograph in 1874, shortly before Edison's invention. There were several types of mechanical devices such as the phonograph, the graphophone, and other players throughout the 1920s. During the era of the phonograph, also saw the introduction of an alternative recording technology that was little seen by the public, but increasingly used in studios. This was magnetic recording, which was first introduced around 1899 through 1900 by the Danish inventor Valdemar Poulsen. Then came the era of tape recording that would eventually displace both the phonograph and optical recording methods. In the 1940s, Ampex, EMI, and other firms reintroduced tape recording. Engineers found it easier to edit, not to mention that it was not only convenient, but low in cost. Even in the late 1940s, there were experiments with multi-track recording on tape as well. As time progressed, so did music production. We went from 78s to 45s, to LPs, ELPs, 8-track tapes, cassette tapes, CDs, and now the era of MP3s. This evolution also changed the face of music production. According to an article written by Hub Pages, analysts say it isn't the lack of new talent nor lack of interest in new music. Napster, Kaza, and LimeWire are just some of the many peer-to-peer programs which have created a gaping black hole in the music industry with staggering declines in sales since 2001. Where we once used to dream of going to a big studio with all of the complicated big recording console machines, reel-to-reels, DATs, and the many other technology that was used from the 60s to the 2000s, There is no longer a need for that because of the evolution of technology. Aspiring musicians can plug in and record with software like Pro Tools, Logic, Cakewalk, and many other DAWs, digital audio workstations, at home. They have played a part in the boom of independent artists, and not to mention, it is so much more or less costly. With the rise of home computers, not only can you mix and master your CD, You can also design your CD jackets and even design the CD itself. It is without a doubt that computers along with the recording software and the many online social networking sites like Facebook, MySpace, YouTube will give aspiring artists the opportunity to become not only more creative, but marketing will be easier and the artist's music will become more popular than anyone will ever imagine. This was my technology and music production podcast. I hope that you really enjoyed this.